Welcome to the Tech Bytes podcast from the Packet Pushers. Today, we're talking to a Fortinet customer, Batteries Plus, a retailer that specializes in batteries, charges, and lighting about its SD WAN and SD branch deployments. We're joined by Jason Thielen, infrastructure architect at Batteries Plus, and Courtney Radke, CISO for retail at Fortinet. And of course, Fortinet is our sponsor for our episode, thanks to them. So Jason and Courtney, welcome to the podcast. Let's start with you, Jason. You guys kind of sell batteries of all kinds. And how many retail locations do you have? We have over 700 locations today and we're growing. We do sell just about every kind of battery you can imagine. And we are the nation's leading needs-based destination for retailer for batteries. So you've got 700 branches and growing. So you've just got more and more stores and I assume some sort of warehousing functionality set up as well. If you're distributing batteries in that sort of volume. You were in the market for SD-WAN or were you looking to upgrade the company's firewalls? What led you to the Fortinet SD-WAN? So in the past, we used a less sophisticated firewall. Um, it led to a lot of downtime. We didn't have a automated way to fail over to a secondary connection. And if a store's primary internet connection didn't go down, it was usually several minutes for them to connect an LTE backup device, call into the help desk, get their VPN password reset, et cetera, et cetera. And they would lose sales or customers would walk out the door in the meantime. So Right. So it was that IPSEC uh, VPN over the public WAN by and large, or were we using dedicated MPLS in places or a mixture? It, over time, it evolved. Um, we were using dedicated connections and that led to IPSEC VPN connections. And none of them were really favorable compared to where we are today. Obviously, by the fact that you bought a Fortinet SD-WAN solution, it wasn't working for you, right? So is that what drove the need for SD-WAN, just simply that IPSEC VPN wasn't cutting it? The devices weren't all that? That's correct. I mean, today we have stores fail over seamlessly between their primary uh, connection to their cellular backup, and most times they don't even realize that um, the switch has been made. So, Or one circuit's gone down and the other one's fully picked up the load. So it's been fabulous. Are you using just, you know, one primary circuit and one backup, or are you also load balancing across two live links? We use two live circuits. So we use a terrestrial circuit and LTE circuit in combination, but we, we have the SD-WAN almost to the point where it's a more of a backup to a cellular connection. So when we are going, you know, when we're going from transaction to transaction in a store, we might be using a fraction of the LTE and a majority of the terrestrial connection, you know, really kind of leverage more for backup, but you know, it is there. We still see mm. intermittent usage at stores, but it's very. So the LTE is the backup and you want to use the landlines as a primary by and large. Some people have said that that sounds or feels really difficult using LTE. Like how do you have so many LTE connections? Have you struggled with the mechanics, like the business process of having an LTE service at 700 stores or hundreds of stores? No, not at all. Um, we've got really good partners. The technology is great as we're getting near 5G speeds. You know, we're entertaining upgrading those cellular modems to faster modems or modems mm. that can handle 5G. And as I said, in a lot of cases, the cellular connection is sufficient to process you know, store transactions. So I want to, before we move on, Jason, I just wanted to ask you about the operational side. A lot of people who buy SD-WANs and deploy SD-WANs say how how the operations of their network has changed. Have you got a similar sort of story there? We do. Our, our operations have changed uh, dramatically. We, we no longer dread the day our terrestrial connections go down. We have more seamless failovers and we have tremendous visibility into that failover or you know, usage because of the Fortinet, where we didn't have that before. We, you know, it was just a blind spot. So Courtney, what's the broader retail picture? You're actually a product manager for the retail space. And I think SD WAN is almost custom built for the retail market. So has the pandemic affected the SD WAN market one way or the other? And what is the broader retail market for SD WAN from Fortinet's point of view? So, so retail is all about that experience. And so I think SD-WAN, as you said, is, is purpose built to protect and enable that experience. And, and I think you know, I came from retail and oftentimes I understood that, you know, five years ago, if I was offline uh, or I didn't have robust applications on the roadmap, I, I was probably only missing out like on a potential portion of, of customers and sales if my connectivity was down. But 
that's really not been the case for quite some time. Uh, yeah. You know, over the last few years and, and definitely over the last 12 months, we've seen, you know, SD-WAN really go from a, a nice to have to a have to have it. It's because of that increased need to to rapidly adapt, to adapt the business and, and support that always on customer experience. One of the big features about SD-WAN for retail, and we've talked to lots of people here on Packet Pushers about this, is the ability to open up stores and close stores very quickly mm-hmm. because you don't have to wait six weeks or 12 weeks for a circuit provisioning. You can pop it in. And Jason alluded to the fact that LTE works just fine. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's really creating that flexibility in plug in whatever circuit you want. And, mm-hmm. and it's going to ride on that backbone of SD-WAN to make sure that it's supporting that always on experience, that it's supporting those SLAs that your customer expects. Because SD-WAN you know, is all about creating that transparency. They sh- a customer should never know that you failed over to a backup circuit. You shouldn't be sacrificing you know, performance. You shouldn't be sacrificing uh, security or anything else mm. when you fail over to a backup. It's not a backup anymore. It's now, you're essentially, it's an always on experience and that's what SD-WAN is really supporting. Now, what about the security? We've seen a lot of retail companies have to comply with PCI Mm -hmm. legislation and also privacy information because they're taking Mm -hmm. customers' personal data. Are you able to convince retailers that you've got that in hand? Are are the SD-WAN appliances got the security features they need? Hopefully there's not a lot of convincing having to go on because the, the, the threats are very real. And I think, you know, unfortunate or fortunate for us that it, it's very publicized as well, that the threats mm-hmm. are real. And, and I think what we have to understand is not all SD-WAN solutions are created equally. And, and a lot of them don't have SD-WAN or don't have security. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's either an overlay, it's a bolt-on or, or it's just, you know, foregone. And it's up to the, you know, the customer to try to, you know, layer that on themselves. So I think, you know, for us, we're, we're a security and engineering company first. So we built our SD-WAN is secure SD-WAN. Security always has to be at the cornerstone. Well, Fortinet was the firewall company and the IDS right. and the threat detection. So always had all of that. So Jason, those security features are part of your model as well? We do use UTM. We rely heavily on that. We definitely sleep better at night knowing that's all baked into the product. We have a tremendous degree of confidence in a lot of the things that Courtney just mentioned. Realizing Fortinet was, you know, a security company first. That was one of the primary reasons for going with Fortinet. Jason, it also sounds like uh, you're doing an SD branch model where you're also bringing in uh, other Fortinet gear like uh, wireless APs. Is that the case? We currently have a wireless AP at each of our stores. We limit the number of SSIDs for security reasons. We have different SSIDs on different VLANs uh, within the store to accomplish different tasks uh, to provide services that we carry in the store with that security focus in mind so that we have purpose-built SSIDs and they have corresponding VLANs for that reason. So it's, it's very well thought out architecture and that's only possible because we can exercise those well thought out ideas with the you know dynamic solutions that come with. So is that all administered from the same console, the SD-WAN and then the branch LAN stuff is all one product. It's not, sometimes what we had in the past was you have the APs are one product and the switches, you know, one product and the VPNs are a product and the fire. And then you had this problem where trying to bring it all together into a unified whole was very difficult. Is there some convergence happening there? That's very true, Greg. We do leverage the Forda Manager extensively. We can push out policies, uniform policies to every single store that are the same. Everything from whitelisting and blocking URLs uh, to different network segmentation policies to provide that PCI security and also to keep other PCs from acting as registers when they shouldn't be Hmm. because they're not on a PCI segment in our store. So you do really have that unified thing. So you feel like you're in... Actually, you don't look very stressed. I'm sort of, you're here on video. And <laughs> once upon a time when I talk to, to CISOs, you know, people in charge of the network and retail stores, they'd just be sitting there going like, yeah, we know it's not great. But you actually look quite quite relaxed these days. Is that is that a fair statement? I would say I'm slimming a lot better these days. Yes, <laughs> true, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think that's a pretty good endorsement, Jason. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, Courtney, from the value, when you go out and talk to retailers about the SD branch product, what are some of the key messages that you'd back onto? Like Jason's given you his point of view. What would you pitch to people who are looking at the SD branch? 
Yeah, I feel like Jason did a pretty good job there. I think, you know, when, when we talk about SD branch, it often boils down to, you know, kind of three core elements of that integration, orchestration, and automation. And, and as you said, you know, you didn't normally get that in the past. It was, mm-hmm. I got to jump over here for my, my switching. I got to jump over here for my APs. I jump mm-hmm. over here for SD. It, it just, it didn't all come together. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's almost impossible to manage and, and get sleep at night if you have that point product approach or that, or that piecemeal architecture. So I think all of those are extremely important right now. And as we look at retailers today, it's it's about cost efficiencies. It's about technology efficiency. You know, we're always looking to standardize, re- reduce overall risk. I think those are the things that SD Branch, you know, provides. SD Win is all about protecting that experience and making sure that you're getting the best investment from you know from from your transports. But yeah. you know, SD Branch is all about getting the best investment from a long lived investment that is infrastructure. Oh, there um, were so and- many gaps in the old model. You know, you could t- your wireless APs could be configured one way, and the switches right. were configured in unifying all of that configuration and not leaving any coverage gaps was really difficult. And effectively what you get with the 4D manager is this automation. It all just becomes Mm -hmm. one thing. You configure something in the 4D manager and the actual, what goes down into the store is this policy and intent. If you want to use the buzzy wuzzy words and push it in. And then the APs have got this consistent configuration and every single store just like that. And that to me is just like knowing there's no gaps is just a real step forward. I think for most of us. Yeah, I mean, let's get buzzier a little bit, though. I mean, w- what that allows you to do is it truly allows you to embrace a zero trust methodology, which everybody mm-hmm. thinks is this scary, scary thing. But when you start to think about your switches, APs, firewalls, SD WAN, all of that is integrated, it becomes an easier concept to swallow, you know, moving to a zero trust methodology, which is, I think, honestly, where, where everybody should be going. Courtney, I'm curious if you're seeing more retailers wanting to provide a wireless experience for their customers. So obviously, they need to have all of their, you know, cash registers, points of presence and stuff, uh, highly available. But what about that customer in-store experience with a wireless connection? Yeah, I think it's becoming more difficult, you know, with Mac randomization and stuff. But I think, you know, monetizing the the experience, monetizing the data of people, you know, connecting to your wireless network, it's always that nirvana. People want to gain more from that in-store experience. And so whether it's, you know, in-cap mapping or, or heat mapping, they definitely want to make sure that they're putting in the wireless to support business, but they also want to make sure that they're monetizing the data that they get from it. Well, thanks, Jason and Courtney, and thanks to Fortinet for being a sponsor. If you want more information about what you've talked about today, it's a really simple thing to go to, you go to 40net.com slash product slash SD dash WAN. Check out the product portfolio there. They've got actually some really interesting white papers that really easy to read. The 40net portfolio doesn't need, uh, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to dig into it is one of the things uh, because I have to prep for each of these episodes and uh, I do like simple marketing, something that doesn't hide it so much away. As always, you can find this and many more fine free technical podcasts along with our community blog at packetpushes.net. Follow us on Twitter at, at Packet Pushes and you'll get notice up updates and so forth. And we also do the same thing on LinkedIn. And last but never ever least, remember that too much networking, even in a retail shop, would never be enough.